All right, so um, I'm going to be talking about uh, another Patreon request, and this one comes from Luke Morehouse, who asked me to do a Ed Ed Netty Has Been Hotel Patreon request. You might see a few more of them because a lot of people ask me for Has Been Hotel crossovers. And I do stress a lot. Like, I know the show came to an end, but holy shit, we, there was a lot. <laughs> there, um, there was a lot of <laughs> my Patreon request. But if you guys would like to have a Patreon request done, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, where you guys can hit the third tier. That'll allow you access to send me Patreon requests to do here on YouTube. But other than that, uh, yeah, let's get started with the video. So the story is, like I said, Ed Ed Nettie and Has Been Hotel, and the story is, begins with um, the Ed, Ed and Eddie coming over to Double D's house, and he's just basically like, yeah, I'm clean, you know, mother, uh, mother and father tasked me with cleaning out the attic today, so, you know, what do you, what say you lads, will you help me build, you know, help me clean out this attic and maybe find some lost treasures along the way, and they're like, no, but like, if we could, s does your parents care if we sell any of the stuff off? And they're like, well, I don't think they would. Um, it's just all storage at this point. Um, sure. And he's like, then let's get to, f to organizing. So they basically um, start cleaning out the attic, but it's more like Eddie. Like Eddie is just kind of like sifting through everything and just kind of like trying to find a, a you know something of value. Where he's just kind of like, yeah, you know, uh, where's all the cool stuff? I'm waiting, you know, I want to, you know, where's like the uh, antique stuff that I can, you know, st you know, take, mo you know, get some money for. But unfortunately, he wasn't finding anything until he found an old uh, radio. He found like a red and black radio. And he's like, huh. This looks like junk, and just tosses it away, but Double D manages to catch it and is like, No, Eddie, you don't understand. This, uh, this is a radio that belonged to my great-great-grandfather. Um, <laughs> this, uh, you know, we've been trying, you know, it's strange. I don't know why uh, we got rid of it. And he's like, Is it worth money? And, she, and he goes, I suppose it's an older model, um, and, it, and this is a rare coloring for this particular type of model for this radio. And he's like, Cool! Then I'll take it off your hands there, bud. Um, so Eddie takes the radio while Double D's like, Eddie, I think like I don't think my family has any need for it, but still, like, give me some credit. Like it late it's mine by you know, it is mine. He's like, and now it's mine. Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> and Ed's just here like <laughs> you know, finders keepers, double D. <laughs> and he's just like, Lumpy's got you Lumpy's got you there, sockhead. So, um, even, but then Double D points out, look, Eddie, even if you wanted to sell it, you can't. The pawn shop, uh, you know, the pawn shop up, uh, you know, uptown is closed already. Um, you'll have to wait till tomorrow to, uh, to at least have someone appraise it at the very least and see and tell you how much it's worth. And he's like, as long as it's enough to get us enough jawbreakers to, uh, for the rest of the summer, I'm in. <laughs> so Eddie does take it home. He takes the radio back home, and um, he just sets it on the counter. He's like, oh, baby, you are going to make me so much money. You don't even know. I love you already. If uh, you know, I'd tell you I'd love you, but you're already going to get sold, so I'm not. <laughs> so Eddie leaves it there, but late in the night, he hears like a ra the, um, the radio turn on. And it's all twenty, you know, nineteen tens and twenties and thirties spooky songs like um, Henry Hall's "Hush, Hush, Hush." Here comes the boogeyman, or "I'm the boogeyman." Um, the house is haunted, and he's just like, "This is getting weird." Um, and it's all like, you know, every night it would just switch on at like midnight, switch on, and Eddie would like be freaked out, but like turn it off. <laughs> and he's just like, man, why do all the weird, you know, why do all the weird objects in Peach Creek, <laughs> you know, curse us? Because he's like talking, obviously referring to the phone that led to bad luck and the uh, boomerang that turned everyone's personalities. He's like, what? Well, uh, I'm going to be happy to get rid of you because I'm tired of all this weird stuff. But Eddie 
um, then decides to take it out of his room and put it in like his closet just to hide it for a bit, you know, just you know, just for the night. But it keeps playing, and it also then it starts like um, having this red light come from it, and he's like, "Ah, oh, don't like that, don't like that." So he get he like rather than investigate it, Eddie does the uh, smart thing. He jumps out his own bedroom window and runs straight to Double D's house. Bree's like, Double D! Weird stuff is going on with that radio! And Ed Double D's like, Ed, you, uh, Eddie, you must have a nightmare, been having a nightmare or something. There's no way a radio could possibly, you know, torment you as bad as this. And he's like, oh, you don't believe me? Well, you come to my house and get it. Let's get Ed, too. I'm not going alone without you boys. So they grab Ed and they take him with him and he's like, Ooh, are we having a slumber party? But no, they open they open the closet, and Eddie's like got like a like a um, golf club. Ed's just wear, wearing like a hard hat, um, and and Ed, and Double D is just still like this is stupid. So he throws open the door. Nothing, darkness there, and nothing more. But the thing of it is, is that Ed, Eddie goes, you know, <laughs> Eddie goes, hey, um, Double D. Yeah. There's supposed to, the light was all like the light was on in my uh in my closet. It just turned the light the there was a red light that emanated from it. So why is my light off? And he goes, "Obviously the the light bulb burned out, Eddie." <laughs> and that's when they hear like, you know, that's when they like peer into uh, like uh and then they hear like a song inside the um the closet. And that's when they see, like, a pair of just red eyes and this big, toothy smile show up. And they get the fuck out of there. <laughs> like, they just deuce immediately when they see that, you know, chicanery. Um, <laughs> they just bolt. And, yeah. So, if you haven't guessed already, that's Alistair's radio. Um, in fact... That's Alistair's first rate, the first radio he ever got. Um, so Alistair um, basically like hounds the boys all night. Like they they try to run, and he's just like, uh, you know, what was that? Some kind of mo they're hiding under Ed, like Ed's bed. They get under Double D's bed, and they're like, what was that? Some kind of monster? And uh, Alistair's just sitting there next to him, like a monster. Where? They're all just like. <laughs> And Alistair just goes, scream and run. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> They're just freaked out. And Eddie, uh, like, he finally catches up with them. And he's like, boys, I have to tell you, I, I've been looking high and, you know, I've been looking high and low for you. And this game has been quite fun. Of uh, This little game of cat and mouse has been rather fun. But I have to tell you, it has to come to an end. And Eddie's just like, don't eat me. I'm too young and beautiful to die. If anyone, like, if you want to eat my friends, that's fine. And Double D's like, you motherfucker! <laughs> Ed's just like, I get to be sacrificed to the great demon gods. So accept me as tribute! He just rips his shirt off. And Alistair's just standing there like, please let me finish. For so long, I've been looking for that radio because it belonged to me. It, you see, I, when I was alive, I lost it in a card game to a... Shall we say a charlatan of sorts? When he got to hell, I sorted him out. And and um, Double D's like, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Mr. Alistair, please. Alistair, at your, the radio demon at your service. Right. But my great-grandfather was by no means a charlatan. He was a good man. He was a pom uh, And that's when Alistair goes, oh, 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 he was a pompous asshole who I took great pleasure in tearing apart and letting everyone, te uh, you know, listen to his screams as I strangled him with his own intestines. And the, ed the Eds are just like, Jesus. Um, and that's when, uh, when Alistair goes, that radio actually belongs to me. If I can have it back, please. And he's like, yeah, take it, it's yours. But, ed uh, like, Eddie, however, goes, Hey, hang on! I wanted to sell this for money. So, what's your deal? And Alistair's like, deal. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. What do you What do you have to offer? And that's when Alistair's like, oh, I see. Well, if you would, if you give me back my radio, I'll tell you what. 
I'll give you everything your heart desires. Deal. And Eddie, Double D's like, no, Eddie, please don't. You know, this is, you know, I don't believe in heaven and hell, but this is scaring me. And Eddie's just like not listening. He goes, deal. And he shakes Alistair's hand. He gives the radio back to him, and he's like, ah, pleasure doing business with you, boys. And Eddie, you'll wake up tomorrow a brand new person. So. Alistair leaves and 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 Eddie is just like all excited because now he's like I can't wait to go you know do you hear that double D I'm gonna wake up a brand new man and Eddie goes to bed and the next day double D and Ed go to Eddie's house to see what's going on and they they knock on his door because it's like it's like noon and they still haven't seen him so Ed and double uh, double D like go inside his bedroom and are like in shock of what they see because what they see. Ed ain't, you know, Eddie's not there. At least not how he looked. <laughs> Basically, after looking around in his room, you know, in, Ed, in uh, Eddie's room, they find a um, 25 cent quarter uh, sitting on the bed. But it's not, it doesn't have like the George Washington face. It's Eddie's face and he's like screaming. So there, there's where we end. Yeah, this kind of takes like a Goosebumps, ta like creep show kind of ending, doesn't it? Anyway, so there you go, guys. That's pretty much the Ed, Ed, Nettie has been hotel crossover. I'd like to thank Luke Morehouse for this Patreon request as well as continued patronage. You guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of it? Comment below, let me know. And once again, if you'd like a Patreon request done, just hit the link below. Head on over to my Patreon. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.